And um, about a year ago, Mary McKillop paid a visit to a hospital in Sydney one night and sat on a bed and had to talk to a Greek Orthodox lady who didn't even know who this nun was, except she was dressed really as a real nun. So she knew where she was. And she told the next morning, she said, oh, uh, and I've, this was told to the bishops officially at our November conference last year by the postulator in charge of the beatification cause, the nun in charge of the cause going to Rome. And the Greek Orthodox woman had a Catholic neighbour who visited her and I said, oh, one of your nuns came to see me late last night. She said, I'm going to get better. This was a woman who had been very seriously ill. And I'm feeling great. She said, I'll be going home soon. And she had a long talk to me. Her name was uh, Sister McCulloch. She was thinking of Colleen McCulloch, the author, obviously. It wasn't McKillop. That's right, McKillop. So the next day, the Catholic friend came back with a picture. I said, was that her? That's her? Well, I'm sorry. Mary McKillop died 100 years ago this August. She's one, of, she's one of those saints I call interventionists, who God, by his own providence, is allowed to keep coming and going with us. That happens too. But you don't conjure a saint up. You don't say, oh, appear to me, please come to me. You no, no, no. You, you leave that to God. Once you start that, you'll end up having imaginary visions. And then we get these kooky wookies Catholics on the fringe who see our blessed mother on a gum tree up in Wollongong. And... Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, you know. And false Marian apparitions. One of the theories about false Marian apparitions is that they are, or they are cooked up by people who are a bit unstable, a bit of wishful thinking, and old Nick gets in and can impersonate. Very strange thing happened. When Bernadette saw Our Lady at Lourdes in the cave there in 1858, 150 years ago last year, little girls in the town started to have strange visions. Copycat stuff started. And that was occultistic, paranormal, and it was bad. And they were almost parodies of what happened in the cave. So the devil can play games too with us. He's finite, mind you. He's not, he, he's not <coughs> omniscient like God, doesn't know everything. And he can't be in all places at once. But we do, we do have to be careful because you call up the dead, you're not going to get them, you're going to get it and its little minions. So I'm, I'm warning, I'm being quite frank about this. And that's why the Catholic Church, the other mainline churches, Orthodox, Lutherans, Anglicans, say you don't go into this. And the Jews, exactly the same. And the Muslims too, keep out, you keep out. The whole Judeo-Christian Islamic stem of religion hands off this. You're into trouble if you try this. Which is very wise. The other thing is too, uh, there are people who run channeling or seances, whatever they want to call it, who are frauds. And with the electronic age, it's very easy to set up phenomena that are not there. In the 19th century, a lot of the fake mediums made lots of money out of rich people in America and Paris and London by putting on these wonderful shows with lights and things, and they had accomplices hidden under tables and levers they pulled. Well, these days, it's much easier to do that. Much easier to do that. So fraud is another thing and money passes. One of the marks of a false psychic is that he or she is living off it, making money out of it. Either that person's a fake or they're wicked, possibly a witch. Yes, I, I remember when I was a young priest, one of the guys ordained a bit after me, he pulled the devil out of the baptismal rite. He wouldn't put it there. And I did have a parish, I won't say which, last year that tried to slip that past me in the renewal of the baptismal promises. And that got the red pencil. And I said, no, 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 you're not doing that. Oh, well, they didn't... They said, oh, we got it from some other book. I would like to see that book. But, but that dumbing down, the liberal Catholic dumb down... Um, has often focused on evil. Strangely, just at the time when a lot of people in broader society get a bit obsessed with evil. It was really getting on the tram just when it had gone down another track. Um, it's, or getting off when it went down the other track. The, the, the um, problem is, if you go too far with an interest in Satan and evil spirits and else, you can get obsessed. And you'll start reading dark literature and that and that. Well, gothic novels are quite fun to read and take them seriously. But if you get it on the brain, it can 
be oppressive and not good for you. And Christians should be free of that. The attitude to Satan should be, yes, it, he, she, whatever you are, you're there. But Christ has beaten you. I believe in the Lord of life who rose in his own body for me, who is my personal Lord and Saviour, the Lord of the church. He's got a community of people and we're armed. Any baptised person can put up the exorcism hand, you know, and say, get out. And we've got lots of powerful prayers. And Our Lady is very powerful. You can't stand Mary. At an exorcism, once the Blessed Mother's mentioned, they demons go off their brains and shriek and carry on. It's one of the worst. They really hate Our Lady, which is, again, indicative of this inversion of goodness, the flip side of goodness. But we're not dualists. Good and evil are not equally powerful. The problem is lots of modern people have got into this new age stuff or absorbed some of it or started to brood over it, think that, well, there's God and the devil and they're in conflict and you don't know who's going to win, so maybe you put money on both of them, you know, having a safe, you know. And, well, a lot of people who think like that kind of dualism, uh, Christianity's fought that. Uh, that kind of thing was, uh, was why we opposed the Cathars or the Albigensians in the Middle Ages and the Dominicans dealt with them. Um, and they did, and it was severe. Um, and we get criticised for all that, but we saved Europe from what would have destroyed our society and opened the door to a total Islamic conquest. That's what would have happened. And the historians have mapped that. It would have certainly happened. So when the church has been strict and severe, even running an inquisition against this kind of thing, it was to save society. And uh, all those people who sit up in their nice... A nice postmodern apartments and Pope funded the church. So, ooh, look at the dreadful things the Inquisition did. Hang on, if it wasn't for that, you mightn't be in your nice apartment. You'd probably be down on your knees in the mosque. Hmm. You don't want to do that. Oh, no, 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 no. So we have to be blunt about these things in private, but not within friends here, I can say that. By the way, though, I've emphasised tonight that Jews, Muslims and Christians are on the same track on this topic. We're together. Not in opposition, which is very interesting, because we're monotheists, one God. That's the thing. Belief in the one God who conquers evil and is all powerful means Satan is a paper tiger. But that attitude of contempt, when you look at the lives of some of the great saints, including modern ones like Padre Pio, his attitude to evil spirits, which did have a go at him quite a bit, was contempt, ridicule. And if you've got your spiritual energies up with a life of grace and prayer and sacraments and you're content in your heart and peaceful, like blowflies that get in your arm on a hot, sticky day, brush them off. Get out. He is the lord of the flies, after all. Beelzebul. That's one of the old uh, uh, Jewish titles for him. Very, very wise, shrewd ones. Look at the devil with contempt is my advice. <clears throat> nice and loud. Yeah, right. We'll come to that second one in a minute. Uh, the first thing to do is listen to that person. Don't start preaching at them. You don't come at them as if you're a Jehovah's Witness with all the answers, right? Because there are a lot of complex things here we don't have the answers to, be honest. It's a very, there's a very complex field when you get into the paranormal. So, listen, let that person talk. Get them to explain why. Get it all come out. See what their religious background really is, or there may be none. These days it's more likely to be nothing. And that's the tragedy. This is, this is piggybacking on the back of the de-Christianisation of our society. And listen, be open, be patient. You're going to have to listen to some appalling nonsense. Don't overreact to it. And then gradually talk them into what about the real God and then share your faith with them. And then keep asking them, are you really at peace? Because they're not. In the end, something will start to crack and then maybe give them my pamphlet to read. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but this is mainly written for Catholics, be careful. And, uh, but there, there's quite a range of good Christian literature on this that could open doors. But be patient and listen. Walk, you've got, it, it, part of our ministry to other people as Christians is to walk with them. 